What's going on, world? It's your boy, Kuya P, Nerds World of the World, and we are back with another week of entertainment picks. Joining me, as always, is my pal, Heather Hertz. How are you, Heather? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. Um, Kind of a rainy day today. I'm sure you saw outside. Kind of a chill day vibe right now. It's been a wild day. Going to be a busy week. Uh, we've got some screenings that we're going to be uh, linking up at and giving reviews, I'm sure, later on this week. Uh, but some cool stuff coming our way this week. Um, uh, other than that, what, what haven't I been doing? Catching up on X-Men 97. Um, mm -hmm. I missed a few episodes, but I'm all caught up now. Um, kind of a, like a, oh my gosh moment with this last episode. Uh, are you caught up? I'm not, but I'm doing the wait until I binge thing. Um, That's right. Okay. So I'm, and I'm okay with that. Like it's, I, I'm not expecting a lot of spoilers. There's a certain element of when you're already in comics, you really don't expect a lot of spoilers. You just True. don't spoil out of cure, out of courtesy. Yeah. Um, but I will say it's getting really hard because people just, if you look on the feeds every single Wednesday, yeah. it is just people who are absolutely enamored with the show. And I, I won't deny it. it's kind of hard this time to wait for that binge. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel bad for the people that uh, are getting spoiled and weren't comic book readers. Yeah. It's kind of, to me, it's been painted by the numbers as an X-Men fan. They're following all what I already know. So it's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of cool and interesting that they're bringing it to the animated series. Um, but I'm looking forward to your conversation, to our conversation, once you've binged it um, and what you think uh, they've done, if they've accomplished, uh, you know, bringing the series back and interjecting these storylines from the comics. Um, real quick for me, it's been a fun ride and I'm, I, I can't wait for more episodes and uh, hopefully further seasons uh, if they continue doing what they're doing and maybe even bringing back some other uh, series that we know and love uh, or creating some new ones, you know, there's a wide <laughs> universe over there at Marvel, um, would love to see it. Um, speaking of which, uh, let's head into the picks uh, this week, Heather, because I know we've got a lot of things going on uh, today as well as the rest of this week. So stay tuned, y'all. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming. Um, there's one film coming back to start off my picks. Uh, it's not part of my regular picks. This is in my, uh, so I'm doing a four instead of a three um, because I wasn't too blown away by part one of this. Uh, it's coming in on Netflix this week. Rebel Moon, Heather. Uh, what did you think of part one of Rebel Moon? I, I really feel bad because, Max, I know that you did such great work. It was so hard. For, you You did such incredible work. Um, but it was it was disappointing for the amount of hype that it got. And, uh, it, and it was disappointing in multiple factors. It wasn't like a lot of people are pointing to the writing. A lot of people are pointing to the directing. Honestly, it was a hodgepodge of mediocrity. And I'm not, I honestly, I haven't even watched the full first one because it was so, I mean, it's not one that we reviewed. It wasn't one that I was running towards at the beginning. Um, but it was one where when I finally did get to it, it honestly got kind of boring and it was kind of a mess. I And I, and I'm not even going in the Zack Snyder kind of messy area. It was just a mess of a film. So. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I will check it out. Um, some, at some point this week, weekend, um, just, just cause I got to, I feel like I have to, I already invested time into the first one. Um, there are some moments in it, but yeah, it is kind of a mess. Everybody rebel moon part two, the scar giver kind of an appropriate title. Cause we're scarred from the first one. It's going to give us another scar. What a title. Let's head into the trailer for Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, dropping this week on Netflix. Is you and I fighting together? You must know. You cannot win. You're all here. Because there is nothing to return to. Dark days lie ahead of us all. 
We will teach you how to fight. That's impressive. The Scar gave us a moment. Those this village holds most dear. I shall destroy them. I have no choice but to fight. This car give her herself. Go, 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 go. Are you truly prepared to allow this to continue in your name? I'm sorry. I won't allow this place to die for me. Right. This week on Netflix, Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Heather, what are your thoughts uh, having seen that trailer? Uh, I'm still in the same spot. It, it was The first one was a mess, but hey, you never know. Maybe this one's going to tie up some loose ends, bring some stuff back together. Um, it, I, Netflix put a lot of money into this, um, that, and they took away money from other places that could have you know, used it. So uh, here's hoping. <laughs> Yo, my thoughts. This was my first time seeing that trailer. Um, I hadn't seen any coverage uh since the last one. So um same, same as you. Uh it looks same of the uh same what we used got before. Uh Zack Snyder definitely has a style. His style is fluid through all that. Um, but what really kind of got me as well is his in regards to that style, he does kind of like the same paint by the numbers type of shots. And that was so fluid throughout this trailer. I'm like, okay, it's going to be this. It's going to be that type of shot. It's going to be this kind of shot. It's going to be low angle from this part. It's like so predictable that it's just like, yeah, paint by the numbers. Here's a new black and white copy. Let's throw the, this new batch of colors on it. And it's it's like carbon copies of everything else he's done. Like I said, I'm going to check it out. But yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I'm kind of blah about it all. Um Again, salute to the cast and crew that are, are involved. You know, it takes a village to make a film. They all put their heart and soul into it. I know how difficult it is to make a film, um, but I just, I guess, wish there was a better management, you know, coach running the team to just make sure we're doing something different. Um, maybe we need to get high with uh, uh, in regards to, to getting things better and off the ground. That leads me to celebrating 420 for my first pick out the gate, Heather, because that was a, a, a blase blah pick because it's dropping this week. Uh, everybody's going to be talking about it. Uh, you ready to get to these topics, Heather? Sure. <laughs> All right. This Saturday, 420, synonymous with getting high, we have a new series, reality series, about a marijuana medical dispensary in California, L.A., it's called High Hopes. It's coming to Hulu. Um, I will also uh, have my interviews with the entire cast dropping throughout this week. Uh, such a good time talking to the, the folks involved. And it's a fun little series. If they're good to do a reality series, you uh, what it makes perfect to me, it makes perfect sense to do a series on the cast of characters that go to a medical marijuana dispensary. You're meeting all different kinds of people and the talent involved uh, behind there, the, your bud tenders, not bartenders, your bud tenders. Uh, let's check out the trailer. Uh, and again, check out the interviews that we're gonna have uh, on the NRW with all the fine uh, creators behind this. Here we go. I saw Lion King, it came out when I was born. Kakuna Makata. <laughs> I took Hakuna, Ma Hakuna Matata to the next. I took that seriously, yeah. <laughs> we are MMD, which stands for Medical Marijuana Dispensary. 
Wow, we we're just up the street from Hollywood Boulevard, where we see over 25 million tourists a year. Look, he's on. <laughs> Our vision is to expand the company. We are tracking 32 cities to go after right now. Just two people can't launch a brand. It takes a village. Do you trust them to pull it off? <laughs> no. Okay, bye. Uriel's our oldest employee. I feel like I am MMD. You have to come to work sober. I've never done that. It's better to ask for forgiveness and ask for permission. That's how I get away with a lot of things at home with my mom. We're going to bring back one of our OGs. She's a troublemaker, but... I'm the best bud tender they have. Being the new guy here, there's a lot to learn. <laughs> when was your last girlfriend? 2017. Interesting. <laughs> Got two cats. He's out there sinking, so I think I can help him out. <laughs> you should hang out, man. Like, <laughs> I'm more of a ladies man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's a lesbian. I'm not. So <laughs> we can't launch a brand twice. This has to go right. We yeah. do not allow employees to be high while working. Uh. <laughs> Example of us going corporate right there. God help us. Hollywood breeds nuts. What's a lobster doing in the dispensary? <laughs> There's a chance that this is going to crash and burn. Yeah. Oh. This group of misfits have to deliver. They seem like they might be able to help me out with something other than just dispensary work. The next customer that comes in, I want you to flirt with them. Freddie is going to help you out over here. Hello, lady. Hello. I'm uh, new in town. These are beautiful 20s, by the way. Came out of the ATM. <laughs> what are the dreams and goals that I have? I hate that question, dude. There you go. All episodes dropping on 420. Um, Heather, again, a, a reality series about a medical dispensary. You know, not too much to explain there. Um, they're trying to expand the business. I, I had a chance again to check out uh, the series in advance. Uh, it's very sweet. You know, uh, I don't know if I don't, I don't know if you're into reality TV. I think uh, at the core, the people involved have a lot of heart. You know, uh, they kind of got like a little work family. And uh, yeah, and there's some misfits within the bunch, but you know they all kind of come together uh, as they're trying to expand out this business. Uh, what do you think about High Hopes? Uh, I won't deny that reality TV is not for me. No hate on anyone who loves it. It, it is an escapism. It is a even if it is mostly planned out. I'm sorry, guys. Also, WWE is scripted, so I'm sorry to burst everyone's bubble in in one. Don't self say that, Heather. I don't believe it. Cody um, just finished his story. What are you talking about? Uh, to, to be fair, though, just because just because I said scripted doesn't mean that it's not real. Those are two different things. Um, but with that being said, I'm just I'm just not a a, a reality fan. Um, but it's it seems really cute. It seems a lot of fun, and it seems very business oriented and a very modern business. Um, the legalization of marijuana is a question that a lot of people uh, that a lot of people kind of are conflicted about. Um, even those who are pro legalization, because people believe that you should that body autonomy, including what you put into it, is something that you should have that right to. Um, you you know th this is going to bring up a lot of questions and it's going to bring up a lot of conversation, and that's really what any TV show is going to be about. Uh, so I look forward to that. Um, is it something I'm rushing to turn on on Hulu? Not so much, but is it something that I I absolutely would love to see the conversation out of? Totally. Agreed. Same. Yeah. When this came through, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, reality TV. I'm not the biggest reality TV. I think Survivor is probably my biggest kind of uh, reality type show. Heather's like, no. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe wrestling. But to me, wrestling, I don't know, wrestling is its not, own thing. Wrestling is its wrestling own is thing. Wrestling is not reality TV. Real wrestling is scripted television. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was very cute, uh, when I did check it out and then to talk to the people, you know, they all came, you know, with their true selves and you can feel, yeah, the, these, the, these aren't, you know, actors that are having to like, they, they were very real and so much fun to talk to. So check out those interviews y'all, uh, on the channel this week, 420, all episodes, get high and watch the show. Have fun. It's cute. Um, this one you may not want to get high for cause you might, uh, get a little scared. 
uh my second pick uh deals with ballerinas and vampires i'm talking abigail heather you ready to check this one out absolutely let's go Please let me out. I'm scared. Cut the shit. You're really good at pretending to be a little girl. Thank you. Quick question. Who's inside a cage right now? What do we know about vampires? How do we kill it? Crucifixes. Stake through the heart. Daylight is a big one. We need to find a way out of here. We split up. <laughs> this is just a game to her. What can I say? I like playing with my family. Hello? Abigail, y'all, dropping in theaters this week, Vampires and Ballerinas. If y'all didn't know, my daughter's a ballerina uh, with the Washington Ballet. So I'm super excited for this one. Uh, you know, I, I like I do enjoy some horror, but to mix these kind of, well, the ballet world and horror and just this, she, you know, just the concept of this film where they abducted this little girl and they think they have her traps, but no, they're trapped. Uh, I, I love the premise. Uh, this was the second trailer, by the way, y'all. Uh, I think we actually did a react to the first mm -hmm. trailer. Yep. Um, what do you think about this one, Heather? Uh, I'm definitely interested in it. It's it's uh, loosely based off, it's a loose reimagining of the 1936 Universal film, Dracula's Daughter. Um, so it's, it's kind of a sort of reimagining of the dark universe that we'll never unfortunately get. Uh, but it, it, it looks definitely, it looks interesting. Um, it's, I, I I enjoy uh, I enjoy Dracula and vampire films, not the ones that sparkle like the the real the real vampire films. Um, so I'm I'm very curious to see this. I I, I am looking forward to it. As y'all know, I am a huge pansy when it comes to seeing movies, uh, horror movies, even though I love them to death, pun intended. So uh, I'm looking forward to it though, and I'm also I'm also hoping there's going to be some great jump scares because it looks like there's going to be. I only wish it was playing at Tyson's Corner so you could join me so I can watch you get jump scared. But I know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, what we will be catching on my top pick this week. Uh, I know she's so excited. I'm excited. Uh, I love this cast. Uh, I've heard, already heard some good things from friends out in L.A. that have already screened it. Henry Cavill, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, my top pick this week. Let's check out the trailer. Gus March Phillips, I have a mission I want you to lead. Thank you, Sergeant. What's the plan? To neutralize the German U-boats in the North Atlantic. We're losing the war. Hitler is not playing by the rules, so neither are we. We both know that I'm not very popular with the administration. The reason they find you unattractive is the very reason I find you attractive. If I'm to do this, I'll need my own team. You won't like them. Let's go! They're all... No! Bad. They'll need to be. This is an unsanctioned, unauthorized mission. If we fail, England will be condemned to a lifetime under the German boot. And so I said, that is not a dog. That is my wife! <laughs> it's very good. Operation are reckless. Ah. Another one, 
Abort this mission now. Hello, can't hear you. Please do off. <gasps> All right, dropping this week. Super excited for this one. I love Henry Cavill uh, doing the Michael Jordan tongue thing as he kills people. Uh, that's just awesome. Uh, what do you think about uh, this film, Heather? Are you, I'm, you're excited, right? I'm, I'm very excited for this movie. Uh, my husband actually, we, we've already done the react to this film and uh, did the trailer. And my husband actually showed it to me before because he was so excited. Like, this is one of those movies that, Every single action nerd is going to just, it, it looks like one of those films that you can just fall into and just enjoy. Um, and I mean, punch Nazis every single day. So it's it's got, a, it's, it hits all the marks. It hits all the good things. And I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited to see it. And this is, this was one of those movies that I was willing to put a hundred dollars down to go travel for because I'm really excited for it. Yes, yes. So stay tuned, y'all. We'll have a full review uh, this week for the film. So to round it all out, uh, High Hopes, Abigail, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Where do I stand on this uh, week's picks, Heather? I I'm going to give it like a, like a three quarters just because once in reality, TV isn't for me. No judge. You do you. Um, and then, of course, you had to throw in Rebel Moon. And Rebel Moon, I'm sorry to the Rebel Moon. That was Moon not big. I didn't put that in the three. That was just I, a... I, you, still, you still put it in. But <laughs> no matter what, I'm giving you three quarters because, you know, it's there are some really good picks in there. And there's just also things that aren't me. But that does not make them bad. They just mean they are not for me. There you go, y'all. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, but I'm so excited for y'all to see uh, the interviews that we'll have with the cast of High Hopes. Again, that was really cool. We got everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. So check that out. We'll have our full review of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare out this week, uh, plus a bunch of other uh, interviews and uh, other things I'm uh, editing up right now uh, and things that we're working on. So stay tuned for all of that, y'all. A lot of things coming. Uh, Heather Hurt, your boy Kuya P, hit us up in the comments below, y'all. Till next week, y'all. Peace. <laughs>